I'm here in Versailles, Kentucky, and we've got the weekly local train coming into town on the R.J. Corman Central Kentucky line, uh, Versailles branch. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Two locomotives and five cars. That's pretty typical of the local trains coming here to town. They serve three customers here in Versailles and run, I always say once a week. You Occasionally you'll see two trains a week, but usually one train every week. Um, both locomotives are facing the same direction today. So on the way back to Lexington, they will be running long hood forward, which will be interesting. I'll definitely catch some footage of that, but I uh, hope you enjoy. I've been just a couple minutes behind the train at every crossing so far. Um, this is a cool little spot here where you can kind of parallel the tracks for a moment. have air horns too but mine are not as cool as his but yeah Vitz turn you around for a second Corman was running a dinner train on this line for a little while kind of in the late I guess like around 2010 that's what I'm trying to say uh, not sure why they quit it was pretty cool with all these horse farms but just running freight trains now still interesting to interesting to see So I meant to get here sooner 
and actually get out and set up for a good shot of that crossing. But as you see, I didn't. I am going to run towards Lexington and try to get a good shot of the train uh, somewhere between Versailles and Lexington. So we will see what we can catch. So we see here the rear locomotive along with three cars break off from the main train over there and they shove a covered hopper car down into the feed mill uh, where they will leave that. The way I understand those cars come from Canada. I'm here at the final crossing where I'm going to film the train. I believe it's Enterprise Drive in Lexington. Not 100% sure on that, but I do believe that's the name of this road. And thought since I had a minute to sit here, I would talk about it for a second, the history of this line the best I know. I don't know who it was built by back in the 1800s. I know in more recent times it was owned and operated by Southern Railway. And then they, uh, that of course became part of NS and NS operated trains on it the way I understand up until the mid 90s at that time they sold the line to a local well, I don't know if it's a local company or not it was G&O Railroad I believe they may be kind of own a few short lines around the country I don't know for sure some of you probably know but it was operated by G&O Railroad for a few years until 2003 I believe and I remember the G&O Railroad I was quite young then, but I do remember it, seeing their three locomotives that they had in town and just, you know, seeing them at crossings and things as a, as a child. And they ran pretty frequently, it seemed. They were running more trains than Corman does now. Or that's how I remember it, at least. I may be wrong, but I, I believe they were running more trains. And they were serving more customers in Purcells, so only goes the reason that they would run more trains and in 2003 Corman uh, bought the line I believe it was 2003 early 2000s and began operating on the line and as I had said earlier I know at one point they were running the Lexington dinner train from downtown Lexington to downtown for sales and then back not really sure why that ended they do have a dinner train in Bardstown that Corman operates so close by and also for sales has an excursion train already. So it may have just been unnecessary or not a market for it or whatever. But they are, they have continued running freight trains. And they, I know they serve three customers for sure in for sales. Um, I believe, I believe that's all right now. Um, but it, it's certainly just cool to see a small you know short branch line like that where trains are running regularly on it and who knows how long it'll last but i'd like to think it'll continue on for a good long while there is a railroad museum at the other end of this line so as long as they are going to remain connected to norfolk southern then this line will be active to some degree whether freight trains are running or not is simply for the museum to get back and forth with equipment but definitely cool i've never been able to find anything online about it i i mean there are a few short clips but i haven't found any video really on it there may be something out there i'm not sure but i just wanted to kind of come out here get a few clips show a few things i'm no historian or railroad person or youtuber or anything like that but i figured i could come out and get a little get a little bit of video and give the history that i know on it um and anyhow uh, go ahead and give this last clip and I, I really appreciate everybody taking the time to watch